Greeting Cyberdogs and citizens of the interwebs. This is Ren Diggity Dog coming at you from the newly trimmed top of the mole hole in this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series. Hey, listen, how's everybody out there doing today, man? I need to learn to start taking some deeper breaths before I start my introduction. I always seem to run out of oxygen halfway through. Anyway, hope you guys are doing really good, man. I'm having a really sweet day today. It's a beautiful day in England. The sun is out. The clouds are gone. We've got a beautiful blue sky. Uh, it's a little bit cold, of course, because it's winter time right now. But I have just returned from a visit to my neighbors. Just went over there a, a couple of hours ago to have a cup of tea with them. My neighbors are a very elderly couple. They're in their 90s. And uh, every now and then I like to pop over and say hello and spend a bit of time with them and uh, have a chat with them. They don't have a lot of visitors. And uh, sometimes I like to go over and just give them a little bit of company. Uh, not only that, their, their children actually looked after my house when I was in South Africa on holiday this December. And uh, I think, you know, the best thing that I could do to say thank you for what they did uh, looking after my place is every now and then just to go over, have a cup of tea, have a chat. And uh, that's exactly what I did this morning. So I'm kicking off my day with a smile on my face. It was lovely. Had a delicious cup of the Queen's finest Earl Grey and a couple of scones. <laughs> Traditional English style. It was fantastic. But I'm back now, my friends, ready to play some Minecraft freaking survival. I want to thank everybody out there, by the way, who voted in the poll of the previous episode. The people have spoken. We were going to be working on the entrance to the mole hole today, guys. By far, the majority of you guys voted that the first thing we start working on is the mole hole entrance. And then, very surprisingly, next on the poll was the quad spawner of doom. Looks like lots of you guys want to see a technical build here in the series. So, we're going to be working on a horrible and deadly quadruple cave spider spawner farm at some point. And I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not going to lie. I did it in my first Minecraft survival series. It was one of the most horrible things that I've ever had to do. I died so many times it was actually ridiculous and I vowed to never ever work with cave spiders again. But the people have spoken. I've got to give you guys what you want. We're going to be doing it and it's going to be sweet. Now speaking about old school builds, I'm going to be doing something a little bit fun with you guys today, okay? We're going to be working on the entrance to the mole hole, but before we do that, we are going to be having a little bit of fun in today's episode. One of the most requested uh, things in my series, in this particular Minecraft su survival series, in fact, it's one of the most asked questions uh, that I get in the comments is, Rendog, why are you not using your texture pack from your previous Minecraft survival series? Now, in my previous Minecraft survival series we were using a texture pack called John Smith Legacy and uh, well we used that texture pack for the entirety of the series over 430 episodes using that texture pack and of course in this series we have abandoned that texture pack and we are using good old survival textures for this particular series. And today, I would like to answer the question that a lot of you old school cyber dogs out there have been asking. Ren Diggity Dog, why are you not using the John Smith texture pack anymore? We really miss it, man. Uh, and a lot of you guys actually started playing Minecraft uh, with John Smith because of my old uh, Minecraft survival series. That's what inspired you to use John Smith. And uh, the John Smith texture pack is an absolutely gorgeous texture pack. Don't get me wrong, I absolutely love it. I'm a huge fan of that particular texture pack but there's a lot of very good reasons why I have decided to not use a texture pack in this series and today my friends we are going to explore those reasons and uh, hopefully I'll be able to convince some of you older cyber dogs out there that we've made the right choice to abandon texture packs for this particular series over here. Now as you guys can see I've been hard at work here on top of the mole hole. I've cleared out all of the trees. I've built up the foundation for the wall that goes all the way around this area and I'm super happy with this 
This has given us a really awesome defined area now <laughs> that we can start getting our imagination cooking, baby. Oh man, look at this. We've got so much space to create some sort of a Moleshire town, some sort of a city, some sort of a capital for this area up here. And I do love how the walls have sort of skirted around this mountain that we're going to be living on. And just looking at this immediately, my imagination starts kicking in. I can see some roads running here. I can see a bridge going over this uh, canyon. Canyon. I can see a bunch of different houses, maybe different districts. Maybe we can get some really interesting uh, builds happening up here. Maybe a very small gobbit town of some kind, underneath of which is going to be the Molehole Castle. So it's going to be a really, really sweet integrated build. Why can I not jump onto this chair? Hold on. Let me try this one more time. There we go. <laughs> It's going to be absolutely awesome, man. We've got loads of space to work with up here, too, which makes me really, really happy. All we've got to do now is get the walls up a little bit more, and that's really going to help define this area. So super excited about this. The mountainside has been cleared, looking super jazz-tastic, and I cannot wait to start working out here. My friends, I am about to perform a magical trick the likes of which the world has never seen. David Copperfield, David Blaine, step aside, because Ren Diggity Dog, the magician, is about to transform the world that we are looking at into, well, the same world, but it's going to look a little bit different. Uh, abracadabra kaplam! What sort of black magic is this? What have you done to our Minecraft survival world? Oh my goodness, it is looking absolutely crazy. Ah, uh, thank you guys. I'm here all week and I can be booked for birthday parties too. I'm pretty good at magic, as you guys can see. <laughs> it's not magic, guys. It's something called a texture pack. Now, I know that most of you guys out there know what a texture pack is, but let's remember, everybody, there are people out there watching the series that are starting to play Minecraft for the very, very first time. And for those of you guys who don't know what's just happened to the world, well, very simply, I have applied something called a resource pack to our world. I've got a couple of resource packs over here, but I've applied my old John Smith Legacy texture pack that I used to use in my Minecraft survival series here in the selected resource packs. And of course, you can easily add texture packs into your Minecraft survival world. It's actually kind of simple. I'm not going to get into the technicals of it, but Google can tell you exactly how to do it if you're interested. And what you guys can see, of course, is what the texture pack has done is it's changed the textures of all the blocks in the game. And it's almost like we're looking at a completely different world out here, right? I wanted to change this to Don Smith and have a little bit of a look around our world in the old school texture pack from the old Rendog universe. And I know this is going to make a lot of you older cyber dogs extremely happy seeing all of these old textures again. Oh, I have missed the John Smith texture pack, I must say. I love seeing all of these old textures that we used to play with. Bear in mind, guys, that I probably spent over, I don't know, 5,000 hours in this texture pack, maybe more, uh, and seeing all of these old blocks again, it's it's making the ending in a dog pretty happy, I'm not going to lie. And uh, there's a couple of things that look really sweet, like the mushroom over there, but there's a couple of things that look uh, looking a little bit funky right now, looking a little bit ugly out here, aren't they? And uh, ooh, look how beautiful the cactuses are in John Smith. They look really, really nice. Uh, now, I know what you guys are thinking right now. Ren Diggity Dog, why did you use this texture pack? It's so cool. Look how nice all the blocks are. Everything is looking super awesome. This is, of course, a medieval texture pack, is the John Smith texture pack. So it kind of fits our theme really nicely, doesn't it? It kind of matches what we're trying to do out here, creating some sort of a, a medieval gobbit town. Uh, and even in the storage hole, wow, that is looking super wooden, isn't it? Even Jock's texture's changed. Oh, wait, it hasn't. Jock still stays the same. Hey, my dude, what's cracking? Anyway, as you can see, everything is transformed. Even the flowers and everything are looking pretty sweet, right? All of the different flowers have changed too. Whole bunch of different textures. And uh, yeah, I know what you guys are saying, man. Hey, Ren, this is actually pretty awesome, my dude. Maybe we should be using this texture pack instead. Hey, hell, you've actually changed. And you're wearing a helmet now and boots. That's kind of bizarre. Where did you get those, that, that apparel, uh, the hell, my dude. Hi, don't be embarrassed, dude. Yeah, they, look, look, smile at the camera. You're looking super cute right now in your little helmet and your little bootsies. Oh my goodness. Um, anyway, pretty crazy, right? How the texture pack or a texture pack in Minecraft can completely transform your world. Not only does it transform your world, of course, but it also transforms the way that you build in Minecraft. 
because of course what we're doing in Minecraft is using blocks to make beautiful stuff. And depending on what the block looks like, that determines what blocks you put next to each other, right? That that determines what blocks you use when you create a build. That determines uh, how you actually build stuff. Let's have a look down this tunnel. This looks pretty cool too, right? Yeah, looking really, really nice. Now, as much as I love this texture pack, guys, and as much as I think that this is really cool, unfortunately, there are some serious problems with using a texture pack like this in Minecraft. And I want to try explain some of these issues to you right now in this uh, episode, because I think that they're actually really important. Let me get a couple of blocks in the inventory over here so that we can actually do a little bit of crafting. And maybe I can try and explain to you guys exactly why I'm not using this texture pack, despite the fact that it looks absolutely beautiful. Now, one of the things that I have been trying to get really good at in Minecraft is something called block variation. And basically, in a nutshell, what block variation is, is using a bunch of Minecraft blocks to create uh, a, a pattern variation in what you're trying to create. So over here, for example, we tried to create some sort of a rock formation. Let's go find a better rock formation than that, actually. Uh, that's going to sort of show off what I'm trying to say here a little bit better. Uh, I think we got a couple of decent rock formations up here, actually. Yeah, there we go. That's actually a perfect one right over here. Now, in the vanilla texture pack, we were using a whole bunch of different blocks here, right? Cobblestone, smooth stone, cobblestone slabs, uh, mossy cobblestone over there, and andesite to create a beautiful looking block variated design <laughs> that really sort of fits into the environment very well. Let's take a quick look at this, right? Let's get that into our brain and let's switch back to the default texture pack and have a look at what it looks like back in default, right? Let's have a look. Okay, so here we are back in default. And I think you guys can probably see what I'm starting to, to get at here with regards to why texture packs don't work. In the default texture pack, we've got all of these different gray blocks over here. We've got smooth stone, cobblestone slabs, cobblestone blocks, andesite, uh, and e we've even got some mossy cobblestone over here too. Now, the difference and the really important thing to note about this particular look in the vanilla texture pack is that the grays of all of these blocks are in the same uh, scale, in the same color scale, or, or indeed in the same gray scale. So when you stick a bit of cobblestone on top of a bit of sand, uh, a bit of smooth stone, the grays in each of those blocks are ex on the exact same um, scale of gray, so to speak, right? So if we zoom in on these two textures, below we've got the stone, and above we've got this cobblestone, look at the pixels within those blocks. You can see that they are sharing the exact same gray palette, right? There's no green in there. There's no different shades of color bringing it, uh, coming in there into the gray to sort of make these blocks not match with each other. And because these blocks share the same gray palette, they fit together really nicely when they are put on top of each other. The same applies, of course, to the andesite, the mossy cobblestone, and all of the other different gray blocks that we have in Minecraft. Even gravel shares the same gray palette, right? Look at that. If we look, go from that block into this block, we can see that the grays, the pixels of the grays, are uh, sharing the same colors, or, or at the very least, are in the same gray uh, dimension, <laughs> or the, the same gray color palette, so to speak, right? Now, let's switch back to John Smith with that in mind, and let's have a look at what we see when we go back to John Smith. And uh, let's use this one over here. Takes a little bit of a while to load up, unfortunately. And yes, we're going to be having a look at the brand new textures coming up in Minecraft a little bit later on, the 1.13 textures, the new textures that are going to be well taken over our world very very soon but let's get back into John Smith now let's have a look at the exact same formation over here right and as we guys as we can see very very clearly these blocks are not in the same color scale at all let's go closer here and have a look at what we were looking at before here we got the cobblestone slab and here we got the smooth stone unfortunately you can see that in the smooth stone there is some green Look at all that green in the pixels, right? And as we come up into the cobblestone, we can see that that green actually changes into more yellow and more orange colors, more brown colors, right? So when these blocks are put on top of each other, you can very clearly see it here. There is a clash between the orange scale in the cobblestone and the green scale in the smooth stone. So when we have a look at those two blocks from far away, they clash really, really hard, right? Look at that. They don't match whatsoever. This is andesite over here, which is 
of course in a completely different color scale to any of these any of these other color um, uh, gray blocks it's still gray but it's super black and in fact there is some purple and some blue inside of this particular texture which means that they don't match with these blocks at all there's a huge clash going on over here so instead of this being a beautiful uh, block variated stone or, or or i don't know kind of like a rock formation in minecraft this has just become a bunch of random blocks plonked on top of each other and it looks really really terrible doesn't it the same thing of course can be applied to the wood let's get into the storage hole and have a very close look at what's happening in the storage hole at first glance looks really sweet love it but let's have a look at this situation over here okay we've got dark oak wood slabs over here we've got oak wood logs over here and oak wood slabs on the side now unfortunately these browns are completely different this is a much clearer uh, much more high contrast brown in the dark oak wood plank and on the on the uh, oak plank of course it's a much more milky kind of brown so we've got a, a huge contrast here uh, this oak wood log of course is no longer matching at all with the oak wood planks and that means we have a huge contrast here between these two browns we've got the the milky brown over here and the high contrast brown over here and if we look at this it just looks absolutely terrible right now let's switch back in to the default texture pack and have a look at this exact same thing again and now we can see the huge difference right of course these two planks are sharing the same texture so they meld into each other from a, a pixel line perspective along the, the horizontal pixels they match each other but most importantly the oak wood log and the oak wood plank or the spruce wood plank excuse me these are spruce wood planks these are not oak wood planks but these two logs actually share a very similar color palette in the browns if we have a look right so some of these pixels are the same like this pixel right here that my cursor is on that color it can be found in in here right it's very very similar to let's try and find one to that one over there right and so that shows you that these actually match of course the uh, the, the oak wood logs also match the horizontal pixels of the different oak, uh, the different planks over here excuse me wow this is some technical jazz happening uh, but that means that when we look at this all the pixels are following the horizontal quite nicely and they all blend quite nicely together and that's why it looks really really cool when we use these different blocks together now the reason uh, that's one of the reasons why I don't like using texture packs right because the texture packs especially the John Smith texture pack the blocks clash very very hard and it's very difficult to do block variation in a texture pack now the interesting thing about block variation is that I think most Minecrafters don't actually use block variation. I've been playing Minecraft for a very, very long time, and I've been experimenting with a lot of different build styles, and I've discovered a build style that I really, really like, and that's a build style that we've been doing here in the mole hole, and that's a build style called block variation, where we use blocks of different types, but in the same color scale to create detail in the builds that we are making right now before i started doing block variation i would create a wall uh, that would look something like this right so a few years ago and especially in my old survival series this is how i would create a wall i would use one block to create the wall in this case we're using uh, stone bricks and that's how i would make the wall and granted that actually does look pretty cool I mean, it's one block, they all match up really, really nicely, and uh, it all looks really, really sweet. Now, let's switch over to the John Smith texture pack again and have a look at, wait, let's use this one, the version 2 one. Yeah, this is, the, this is the one that I was using in my previous series. Let's switch over to the John Smith and have a look at this wall again in the John Smith texture pack. And this is something I want you guys to really pay attention to because this is very, very interesting. This is basically what we are going to be seeing in the new version of Minecraft that is coming up in minecraft 1.13 in case you didn't know all of the textures in the game is are going to be changing and we're going to be taking a look at some of those textures in this episode a little bit later but what the new texture pack is going to do is try to achieve what the john smith texture pack uh, does and what the john smith texture pack does is it adds variation for you so let's have a look at some of these these blocks over here right some of the blocks have uh, two bricks and one big one at the top let's just get a block that doesn't actually break things so we got two bricks here and one at the top this one's got a, a long brick at the top and two bricks at the bottom uh, this one's got a long brick at the bottom and a, a brick there and a half a brick there and a half a brick there and when we put them together like this it generates uh, if you will fake 
uh, block variation, right? It does the block variation for you. It takes out all of the hard work of finding blocks that work well together to create something beautiful. And that, my friends, is totally cool. I think that's awesome. Not everybody that plays Minecraft has time to sit there variating the blocks and adding a whole bunch of different blocks uh, into a wall to make it look cool, right? I, I totally get that, but that's not the kind of Minecrafter that I am. I like to use Minecraft almost as an artistic palette. I see this game almost as a fresh canvas on which I am painting. And uh, this, for me, is kind of cheating when it comes to painting. For example, let's say we wanted to do the block variation style that we've been doing in the series so far by adding a couple of different blocks into this wall, right? So let's open up a couple of holes here, try get a couple of different blocks in. Let's do what we were doing in vanilla, right? Let's add a bunch more uh, space over here. Uh, let's let's break a couple of blocks up there and let's add a bunch of things here. What do we got here? We got crackstone bricks. Uh, so let's add like a crackstone brick there and a crackstone brick there. Let's open this up a little bit, add a little bit more smooth stone. Hey, why don't we get a little bit of andesite in there too, right? Let's get a, a couple of blocks of andesite here and here maybe, and uh, let's get a bit of cobblestone over here, maybe a, a few more smooth smooth stone blocks up there. Maybe we get a bit of mossy cobblestone in there too, right? Yeah, that, that, that's pretty sweet, and maybe we want even a little bit of gravel over here. Or maybe we just keep it nice and simple, get some more smooth stone in there. Uh, that looks pretty cool. All right, sweet. So we've added some block variation into the wall, and well, I'm sure you guys will agree it looks absolutely terrible. Let's have a look at this mossy cobblestone block up there. That is just, it looks like it's its standing out completely. It's in a completely different grayscale to all the blocks around it. It doesn't connect up. And when I mean connect up, I mean the pixels of the sides of the block don't actually connect up to the pixels of the block that's next to it, right? There, there's too much white in this. There's a bit of blue in it and it's clashing like nobody's business. The andesite sticks out like nobody's business too, right? It's just clashing so very hard in this wall. Uh, the only blocks that are looking pretty good together are the stone bricks and the cracked stone bricks because of course, John Smith is cheating a little bit and it is creating that block variation by alter alternating the textures of the blocks as they are placed next to each other. Look at this cobblestone, how badly that clashes. There's some green or some yellow or orange in this cobblestone. And look at that. Look, look how much, look at the contrast rather between this cobblestone and this stone brick. It's just terrible. To my eyes, it looks absolutely awful and I really, really don't like it. Now, of course, what we could do is just change all of this back two stone bricks but for me as a Minecraft artist I think that takes a little bit of, of fun out of Minecraft for myself. I really enjoy using the blocks to try and generate some sort of block variation and in this case when we change back to the to the vanilla texture pack we can see that we we have got a bit of problems here don't we that mossy cobblestone is not looking great up there so let's get rid of that these, these cobblestone blocks definitely don't sit nicely next to the uh the stone bricks however that cobblestone might look a little bit better at the bottom uh, of the wall over here right signifying that these were old bricks that might have uh, cracked at some point right and maybe we want to get a little bit of gravel in there too uh, and maybe, of course, we want to sort of get rid of more of these stone bricks like so and get back to using our base stone block just to get that texture a little bit flatter, to get these blocks looking like they're, they're fitting a little bit more naturally into this wall, right? And as we do that, we can slowly but surely see that the texture of the wall starts to change. And we basically start achieving exactly what John Smith was doing, but instead of just using one block, we're using multiple blocks to do that. And for me, this is the art of Minecraft. This is the, the kind of Minecraft that I personally would like to get better at. I want to use the blocks that I've got at hand to create little bits of art like this, right? And look at that. I, I personally think that that looks absolutely beautiful. To me, it looks like a wall that has been built up of concrete and whatnot. And because the goblets are not rich and they don't have access to a whole bunch of bricks, they've only used a couple of different, uh, a couple of bricks here and there to sort of reinforce the wall. Some of those bricks are even cracked. And in fact, some of them have decayed so much that they're sort of breaking up into little shards of rock and so on inside the wall, right? And to me, this evokes so much more imagination when I look at it than using a single block like in a texture pack. 
Now, speaking of texture packs and speaking of magic in Minecraft, we have got a massive change coming up to uh, Minecraft. And uh, in the next few months or so, all of our worlds are going to change. And everything is going to change because in a few months time, we are going to be getting brand new textures in Minecraft. And I must be honest with you guys, I am a little bit nervous about the new textures because I think the new textures are not going to achieve what I just explained. The new textures are going to be very much like a John Smith texture pack that is going to make it much easier for you guys, or for everyone in that case, to build with a single block type but it's going to make it much harder for us Minecraft artists, so to speak. And I, I say that in inverted commas. <laughs> I mean, it is a computer game after all. But it's going to make it much harder for us to achieve block variation. This is the latest texture pack. And as we can see, we've got a new cobblestone texture, which I must say, guys, I think is absolutely horrible. It looks like, I don't know. It looks like fossilized eggs or something. It doesn't look like cobblestone at all to me. And of course, as you guys can see, its color has changed completely. It is in a completely different grayscale to the original uh, stone blocks and the original grays. All of these blocks, of course, haven't yet changed in the new texture pack. And I'm, I'm hoping that most of the gray blocks will share the same grayscale. And then they'll probably go much darker, I suppose, to match the cobblestone. But as you can see, just from that small change, that texture pack is looking really strange to me. Uh, we can see some changed textures here on the wood, and it almost feels to me like the texture pack itself, or the textures of Minecraft vanilla anyway, are going to shift much more to a much more, I don't know, milky sort of texture. Uh, we're going to move away from the very pixelated textures that we have currently, and we're going to move into a more sort of flat, more high-res type of texture, which I am very unhappy about, I must be honest, guys. One of the things that I love most about the current texture pack is the fact that they are pixelated like this. Because just like I explained a little bit earlier, these pixels work on the vertical and on the horizontal. And we can use those vertical and horizontal pixel lines to match blocks together and to make them look really, really nice. And already we can see just from this cobblestone here how much our Minecraft worlds are going to change. And it's not just going to be my world that is going to change. All of your guys' worlds are going to change. We can see some big changes here to the wood already. Look at that cobblestone. How different it looks. It looks so... I don't know. It, it almost feels like it's an unfinished finished texture. Or dare I say more of a childish... A, a more of a childish texture. Does that make sense? I don't know. It just feels like more of a Disney kind of texture. I think that's probably the best way to describe it. I mean, inside of the storage hole, it's looking pretty cool. I still like how the spruce wood planks and the oak wood logs look together. I think they, they sort of match, although they are in different color palettes right now, as we can see, or different color scales rather. So there's a little bit of a clash there, but I'm, I, I can overlook that because of the, uh, the pixel lines that are still matching. So yeah, looking a little bit strange. Let's have a look around the place though. Let's go down to the, uh, uh, the mushroom looks the same i guess what else has changed anything else has changed dramatically not really it's just the wood that has changed quite a lot and of course the cobblestone is looking really crazy right now and unfortunately these new milky sort of flattened textures are clashing very very hard with the more pixelated textures in uh, minecraft in the current minecraft texture pack and my concern is that if mojang doesn't change all of the blocks to this very sort of disney milky type texture style we're going to have a serious problem when it comes to our textures in the game, right? Everything is going to have to change to look like this. And if it doesn't, it's going to look like, to me anyway, an unfinished texture pack. Now, don't get me wrong, Cyber Diggity Dogs. I am not one of those old school Minecrafters who thinks that any change that Mojang makes to the game is bad. On the contrary, I think change is very important for this game uh, called Minecraft that we all love because... It's a pretty old game and it's starting to get into its later years and change is a great way to revitalize uh, people's love for a game like Minecraft. 
What I am worried about, though, is this direction of the texture, the textures in particular. I think that this direction is, for me anyway, a little bit on the, the well, the cheaty side of things. Because what it's going to mean is that it's going to be, become super easy for us to make builds like this in Minecraft. But it's going to make it much harder for us to make more interesting block variated builds in Minecraft. And this might just be fine. I mean, the textures might end up being so beautiful on their own that when we just make walls and stuff out of one block, it looks so good that we don't actually need to do block variation. But as uh, the way that I play Minecraft at the moment, I'm, I'm just a little bit scared that, uh, well, firstly, the textures are all going to look like they've been covered in milk. And secondly, I'm not going to be able to do any more bl block variation because the textures are going to clash so much next to each other uh, because they've been designed to work with, with only themselves and not with the other blocks in the game if that makes any sense. Anyway, I think that was, it's kind of interesting, um, all of this texture pack stuff. I'm very keen to get your guys' opinions on the new textures that, that we are currently seeing in Minecraft. What do you think about them? Uh, do you like them? Do you think that there's some potential? Uh, or do you think that uh, these textures are kind of the wrong way uh, for the game to go in the future? I'm kind of torn at the moment. I think that if all of the textures can actually work well together, then I'm not opposed to changing the textures to a completely new look. But I want I want the blocks to look good next to each other and I don't want them to only work with themselves um, because that's going to kill a lot of artistic and creativity or a lot of artistic and creative freedom that us Minecrafters have in this game and uh, that would be pretty sad for me to see. Anyway, very curious to see your guys' opinions on all of this texture pack stuff and I hope you older cyber dogs had a fun time going back into the past and having a look at our world in John Smith. I've, it was pretty cool, I must say. Well, Cyber Dogs, it looks like once again, I've spent the majority of this episode talking. <laughs> oh my goodness. I could talk about Minecraft for five days nonstop, guys. I love everything about this game, including the textures of the game. And I think it's kind of important sometimes that we talk about it because, well, our world wouldn't look the way that it looked if it wasn't for the textures. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that little insight into what the Ren Diggity Dog brain thinks about the textures of Minecraft. We're still in John Smith for the end of this episode. I'm kind of curious to see what the Holiday Inn looks like. So we're going to come all the way out here and have a look at this building. I think it's actually going to look really, really gorgeous. Let's have a look at this thing. Oh man, I knew it. I knew it was going to look really good. Doesn't that look beautiful? Um, and I guess one of the reasons it looks beautiful is because, well, we didn't do a lot of block variation in this particular build. Well, we did in the walls, but the roof looks absolutely amazing because it's all one block, right? And uh, yeah, the walls are looking a little bit janky, I must say, uh, due to all of that block variation. But I do love the way that John Smith uh, has changed the way that nature looks in this game. I love the leaves. I love the wood. There's a lot about this texture pack that I do love, I must say. And a small part of my heart does miss it. But as uh, we saw today, I don't think that we can go back to a texture pack. There's just there's just too many clashes happening over here. Now, guys, I wanted to get cracking today on working on the entrance to the mole hole, but I think I've probably used up too much time. I still need a ridiculous amount of dirt, actually, uh, because we're going to be using a bunch of dirt to create the entrance. So I'm going to end the episode here and spend a bit of time out here harvesting a little bit of dirt so that next episode we can start working on the entrance, which, of course, was voted for by the majority of you fun people out there. Uh, but I think we had a pretty interesting texture pack episode and I can't wait to see what you guys have to say about all of this. And uh, very curious to see your guys' opinions on the new Minecraft, or oh, new upcoming textures for Minecraft. And uh, remember, if you're playing Minecraft right now, guys, when that texture pack kicks in, everything is gonna change in your world. And Hopefully, it's going to be a change for the better. But I guess that's just about going to do it for today's episode, guys. And these chickens are kind of freaking me out right now. Uh, you old school cyber dogs will know why. That's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, you hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, you hit the subscribe button. We're going to go back to vanilla textures and we're going to start working on some actual builds back at the mole hole in the next episode, guys. So hope to see you there. Thank you for watching. Ren Diggity Dogs, sign it out. We'll smell you all in the next episode.